Hello, I'm Fred Schneider, and you're tuned in to The Weekly Report, a look at news and insight related to programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. City Communications has debuted Time to Be Well, a new cooking and wellness series featuring healthy cooking and exercise segments. The Channel 2 program, which has been very well received by viewers, features cooking demonstrations by registered dietitian Kathy Berry, along with exercise segments encouraging residents to make healthy choices. So stay tuned for Time to Be Well immediately following the weekly report on this station. You can also view it online at kcmo.org. The Public Works Department has begun building a sidewalk along the east side of Holmes Road between 89th and 93rd Streets. This project will connect the recently completed sidewalks in front of Center High School to sidewalks south of 93rd Street, creating a safer environment for Center High School students who walk to and from school. Construction is scheduled for completion this April. The City's Rich Knoll Pace Setter Award Review Board has awarded Larry Stice, a lead city planner, with a January Pace Setter for the excellent customer service and communication he provides both Kansas City residents and his co-workers. Now you get to talk. Okay. Tell them what you really think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, well based on all that uh, wonderful testimony, what about that raise for the last month of my... Uh, anyway. uh, my uh, nephew emailed me yesterday from Boston asking whether members of the public could attend today and speak in opposition to this resolution. <laughs> <laughs> but he's in Boston, he's not here, so I, I think I, can, I get to keep this today. Thank you to everyone in this room for making my job easier than you know. It was a very, it's a very wonderful job to have and I've uh, always enjoyed it, so thank you as well. To learn more or to nominate an employee, visit kcmo.org slash paysetter. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments for information and insight. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities here to tell you about some exciting news and events coming up at city venues that your whole family may enjoy. For the seventh consecutive year, Kansas City's Convention and Entertainment Facilities has received a Prime Site Award from Facilities and Destinations Magazine. The city's convention center was recognized for its ideal location and impressive amenities, which include more than 300,000 square feet of exhibit space on one floor, along with its state-of-the-art meeting rooms, theater, arena, and ballroom. The 53rd annual World of Wheels will roll into the city's Bartle Hall the weekend of February 8th through the 10th. Guests will enjoy hundreds of custom automobiles, including a tribute to the Batmobile and an exhibit featuring nostalgic race cars. For more information, please visit Autorama.com. The Lord of the Dance, a popular Irish dance show, will perform at the City's Music Hall on Wednesday, February 27th at 7.30 p.m. Created 16 years ago by Michael Flatley, Lord of the Dance produces a beautifully choreographed combination of Irish dance and music with state-of-the-art lighting and pyrotechnics. For more information or to buy tickets, please visit lordofthedance.com. To learn about events taking place at Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, visit kcconvention.com and click on Upcoming Events or call the Convention Center at 816-513-5000. The Federal Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, otherwise known as WIC, is a vital service provided by the Kansas City, Missouri Health Department. WIC can help provide to, to eligible pregnant moms and children supplemental foods to support a healthy start in life. WIC is a supplemental nutrition program for pregnant women, new moms, infants, and children up to five years old. 
WIC provides healthy foods like milk, eggs, cheese, fruits and vegetables, and even more. Um, WIC also teaches family about nutrition and it teaches pregnant moms about breastfeeding. Our clients like our clinic because it's a friendly place to get a little extra help. We provide the healthy foods and then we also do referrals to other healthcare providers. Um, overall, WIC is just a really great place to stay healthy. WIC is an equal opportunity provider, though participants must meet certain income and nutrition guidelines to qualify. The health department currently operates three WIC clinic sites in Kansas City, Missouri. For more information on those clinic sites and locations, visit our website www.kcmo.org health or call 816-513-6360. Hi, I'm Jennifer Fales with the City's Office of Emergency Management. I'm at the Emergency Operations Center today to tell you about the upcoming annual Great Central U.S. Shakeout Earthquake Drill. It's scheduled for February 7th at 10.15 a.m. This is a 30-second drop, cover, and hold on drill. When you feel the shaking start, drop to the ground before you're accidentally knocked down. Cover yourself with a sturdy object, such as a table or a desk, and hold on to it until you feel the shaking stop. You should be prepared for aftershocks. While not as severe as the main earthquake, they can cause additional damage. This drill is for the whole community, and we hope that you'll participate. Most scientists don't predict severe damage for our area, but you could feel the ground shaking, and you may have minor damage it's a good idea to know what to do. Our role during a big Midwestern earthquake will be to serve as an evacuation point for people from the affected areas, as well as to send emergency response forces to assist. Therefore, we need to know the risk, know how to respond, and be prepared to render aid. To learn more about the drill, register to participate, and get tips on earthquake safety, like what to do if you're outside or in your vehicle, go to www.shakeout.org slash central US. No matter what hazard you face, it's a good idea to have a family emergency plan and develop a disaster supply kit of 72 hours worth of things that your family will need, such as food, water, first aid, and other equipment. Don't forget about your pets and have multiple means of communication so you can stay informed. You can learn more about personal preparedness by visiting our website at www.kcmo.org slash OEM. Thank you. The TV show CSI may have a lot of fancy gadgets to solve crimes, but our KCPD Crime Lab has a few smart tricks of its own when it comes to fighting crime. Enough to make the TV show envious. We have volunteers. Director Linda Netzel explains. We currently have six volunteers working and then in the summer we add interns to that and typically it will double to about 12 volunteers and interns. Volunteers help with administrative work, on the, the easier side of the volunteering all the way up to helping us do some management with our evidence and our cases. People volunteer for a lot of different reasons. Some of the reasons are they'd like to have something to do, they're retired, they have some skills, something they can offer to us, and then the other part of it is individuals volunteer because they want to eventually work in a crime lab or in law enforcement in general, maybe not a crime lab. It's very important for us to have the volunteers because of the amount of time that they take off of the caseworking staff. They help with a lot of simple things that the caseworking staff would normally do. So it helps us in our managing cases and reducing backlogs. We spoke with a couple of volunteers, one at the beginning of a career and one sort of wrapping up a career. It's extremely rewarding to be a part of um, what happens here and I can tell that the work that goes on at the crime lab has a significant impact on investigations and being part of that is a privilege. I wanted to do something that had a concrete impact on crime in Kansas City. I work for the latent fingerprint section and I do 
pretty much whatever administrative duties they need me to do. A lot of filing. Although I was ready to retire, I still enjoyed law enforcement. I wanted to contribute in some way. And so I felt like the, by volunteering I could do those things that I enjoyed, but still have the time to do the things that I want to do in my own personal life. I think that volunteering uh, and the use of volunteers is a wonderful resource for the department because we have a lot of detectives, uh, supervisors, sergeants, uh, a lot of personnel that we receive a lot of training through the years and it's really there's a wealth of ability and information and it's a huge resource that director Netzel has has wisely in my view chosen to to uh, tap into again director Netzel there are always opportunities for people to volunteer uh, particularly kids that are in college that are considering a career in forensic science they can volunteer with us during the school year and then intern with us in the summer uh, that helps them see if this is really the job they want to do or the career they want to pursue and it helps us by having a potential long-term interview process with this person how do they fit in and it certainly gives them an advantage once openings at the lab do happen in uh, being selected for that position if you have a skill set that would be an asset to our lab contact the Kansas City Missouri Regional Crime Lab I'm officer Shelley Gaddis have a safe week. Hi, I'm Sean Putney, Director of Living Collections here at the Kansas City Zoo, and it's a pretty exciting day here at the zoo. We have Berlin, our newly acquired female polar bear, coming out on exhibit for the first time today. She came to the zoo about 30 days ago, and what we normally do is spend that time making sure she's healthy and doesn't have anything that we could give to our other polar bear, Nikita, who's our six-year-old male polar bear. Uh, and then after that time, we go through an introductory process with the two. So eventually they'll be together. We don't have a timeline for that yet, but we're pretty excited that uh, we can make a love connection between a couple of polar bears uh, here in the next month or so. Uh, so Berlin's first day out is today. She's had kind of a up and down year and a half or so. Uh, she came to us directly from the Como Zoo up in St. Paul, Minnesota, where she spent some time. Uh, but before that, she was up in Duluth, Minnesota, where her exhibit was flooded out, you may remember, uh, about a year and a half ago. And so they were looking for a place for her to go, and, and the Como Zoo uh, said that they'd take her in the emergency situation. And now she's coming here to the Kansas City Zoo, and we are really, really excited about the whole adventure. Oh, 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 oh,
completed firefighter applications must be received by the Human Resources Department by Friday, February 15th at 5 p.m. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the Weekly Report for links. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Fred Schneider. Have a great week.